Hello there, fellow humans, and has Wargaming completely lost the plot? Because they are selling the Season 1 vehicles again in the shop right now. But the problem is not that these vehicles are not that good because they work. Here's the thing. 78,000 gold for all three vehicles, the Regressor, the Fixer, the Magnate, and then these kit coins that you need to upgrade these vehicles because what you're buying is the stock versions of the tank. So these kit coins will be required to upgrade the vehicle. If you go here, 10,000 for the regressor it might seem like a great price for a tier 9, right? But no, you are not getting the fully upgraded version. Obviously, I already have it on the account, so it looks fully upgraded. But as you can see here, right clearly, you are getting the unupgraded version right here. 7.5k for a stock tier 8. That is a appalling price and i don't know about you guys but i think selling overpriced vehicles that are reskins of already existing vehicles is kind of what's killing world of tanks pc right now so we can only hope that this is not a continuous occurrence right here and that wargaming has they have entered the milking phase for world of tanks pc but i do hope that the milking phase for blitz is not gonna happen as of now but we can already see that it is getting quite a lot worse now let's have a look at the vehicles first, how to equip them, how to consumable them, and then I'm going to be playing them later. Obviously, standard consumable loadout, standard provision loadout, ammo loadout, something like this is going to be the ideal ammo loadout for this kind of vehicle. And then this is the equipment that I do uh, recommend here. Obviously, it does have APCI, so you could make an argument uh, to, for the gun remember, but you only gain 112 DPM, so the calibrated is going to be the better option. And then uh, the enhanced armor, improved assembly, whichever you, one you feel better, pick it. Um, most likely improved assembly makes more sense. Like the more sloped your vehicle is, the more the enhanced armor makes sense because 3% is going to be more than 3%. But basically the last line here is always the three same. That's always the same. Uh, improved modules, defense system, play whichever one feels better. Unless you're 2 and a 5B, then you need fire protection. And then here, refined gun as well to get that down to 0.29 accuracy. Then on the fixer, consumables, provisions, ammo, same here. And the loadout on the equipment, the same as well, basically. And that is also going to be the same loadout for the Magnate right here that I personally would recommend. Obviously, if you don't feel very comfortable with it, try something else. Because finding your own style, finding what works best for you is also very important. Don't just listen to a YouTuber and exactly copy what works for them, because I might play completely different than you do. Now we go with the Regressor. Now, it is a 50 TP with 10 less alpha damage, with a little bit better mobility, but slightly less armor. Well, 30 millimeters less on the turret and 10 less on the hull. So, basically, it's a 50 TP. If you play the 50 TP, you don't miss out on anything by playing this vehicle. It does make credits, but that's about all it does. So, let's see what we're going to be able to achieve in this game. Obviously, the Tiger is probably going to peek forward. I'm going to side scrape the air here, pretty much. Um, but that is still going to work out in most cases. So, we're basically, the enemy team has conceded at this position, which is very nice. I'm going to Clown Peak, or Idiot Peak, whichever one of the two you would like to call this. Just peeking out sideways without setting up. Then, uh, I'm going to now transition into a more useful approach right here. Now, obviously, taking out the Tiger would be nice, but I don't want to get shot by the i 8 So, I'm going to focus on that first. And I also have heavies behind me that can have a direct line of fire towards the Tiger as I'm, like, angled around the corner. But the other guys have a better line of fire. So now I'm going to try to track this guy. It doesn't work. He's too far back already. Now we're going to have to watch out because the enemy team is probably going to push around the back. So we're going to have to be very careful. And obviously now not bother with that behind. But simply push forward and take out this IS-8 here. And wiggle here to throw off the tortoise's aim. Hopefully, possibly, maybe. He shot HE. He was thrown off enough. That is perfect. And now we hold this position right here. And it can use the third armor of this vehicle combined with the 8 degrees of gun depression. And also the mechanic that makes me aim better when I'm moving slowly to peek this corner quite well. And I'm going to move forward here slightly. Obviously, I'd rather be shot by the Pantera than the Tauros because he has less alpha damage. Uh, but obviously, the Pantera has a auto-reloader, which means he can fire off multiple shells. So it doesn't really matter where I expose myself as long as it is not in front of children. So let's see... I go for the Cobra. Now, the Cobra, obviously, it's a meme tank, so it doesn't have proper penetration, so I can just wiggle myself out of that. Um, 
Obviously can go through the front plate still because it's not that thick. Um, who's now gonna disappear? I'm gonna possibly ignore the Cobra. No, I'm not gonna, gonna fire at this guy. Maybe damage his track already. The Pantera's gonna be dealt with. I'd rather have the KB-5 here because he's got more hit points and he's the slow lumbering target, which means I have a high likelihood of actually dealing damage towards him, whereas the Cobra can theoretically run and hide around a house and stuff like that. And he's also being attacked by other uh, teammates here as well. Now, I don't know why that Pantera is still alive, but I'll take the free kill and the free damage for now. And now I'm at 800. The Cobra is coming around the back. I'm going to be very careful because if I go for the KB-5, the Cobra can crossfire me from there. Basically, it's all just situational awareness, and the rest of the game doesn't actually matter that much. So here we go. And uh, situational awareness, situational awareness, that is everything that actually matters. And that kind of hurt in my face, so lower plate. Not very thick. He's hiding in the back. I have enough damage that I can now throw the tank away, so I'm going to go either kill or die. Let's see what's going to happen. He has the cap points, but he's being swarmed of everybody. He just fired as well, so I'm just going to jump across this hill and fire a shot into him. There we go. That's four kills. Not too bad. I mean, I played the games in reverse order, so this is the third one I played, but it's going to be the first one I show you. So basically, they work if you're a good player. But they are... Is it, pff, lol. It's just a 50 TP. This is literally the first game I play. Like, like, look at that. I, I played three battles. That's it. They are good, but they're not 80,000 gold good. No tanks are. Next up, we got the Fixer, which is basically a modified Super Pershing with less DPM, slightly less penetration, but 310 alpha damage instead of 225. It also has one degree less gun depression, but it does have better aim time. However, also slightly worse mobility than the Super Pershing, which doesn't really bode very well for it. However, the third armor, especially behind the armored plates, is a lot better on this vehicle. What the hell is that? Than the Super Pershing. So basically, it's an upgraded Super Pershing. If you have the Super Pershing and you really love playing that thing for some reason, then this one, if you have it, could be useful to take out as well. But once again... The price is absolutely absurd, because obviously only the top configuration of the vehicle is actually worthwhile actually having if you're spending money on it. And I have no idea what just happened with that LTG, uh, but there is another guy back there that it will be the Barask, 320 alpha damage, most likely. So, hopefully he doesn't get unspotted just yet. Um, I don't need him to be spotted. I doesn't matter. Okay, now the Barask is probably going to run away. Let's see what we're going to achieve here. It's obviously not going to be a very good battle, I think. But P44 there as well. So what was the LTG thinking? Like, he has support, right? He has... And what was the MX thinking right now? So the LTG has the support, right? Of, of two mediums at the back of his, of his team. But he's like, nope, I'm going to YOLO into the fixer. Okay, and I'm going to have to be very careful here, obviously, because they're two guys... And I don't want two guys on me at the same time. Always want to fight one tank at the same time because then you actually have a chance of using your armor most effectively, pointing your armor directly towards the enemy that you're fighting because if you're not doing that, then you're going to get penned in the side and you don't want that to happen. So let's see. Rask's bailing out. We're losing the ACAP side. I forgot to disable Supremacy on this press account once again because remember, it's a Suppress account. I didn't actually buy this thing. Um, I don't even have the fully upgraded version of my own account, so that, there's that. Let's see. Already 1500 damage blocked as well, and quite a decent chunk of damage done. Now, unfortunately, because this is Supremacy, it kind of makes most sense to play uh, the caps here, because they got two tank destroyers, two of... One very good tank destroyer, for now, because the SMV is going to get nerfed, but for now it is still a very good tank destroyer. And an IS-2 that's a bit pointless, but it's still can be dangerous and can put me down onto a one-shot low HP. Also some spotting damage here. I mean, yeah, we better just play the caps here, which is very unfortunate, but that's just how it goes. And I do hope that, um, that defender is actually going to be useful at defending the cap B, specifically. Because both of these tanks destroy as well. I mean, the SMV has an alpha damage of 410, but he can still kill me if you hire all slightly, so I think this one is going to be over. I'm going to go around the trains here, try and get some distance to the B-cap if somebody's approaching up that hill, or he's camping in the base. Well, I should have known. He's clownless. 
he would have never moved out of the base anyway. So that's a bit unfortunate there. But now, this guy, if he runs away, should be able to still win it quite easily. Now let's get into a battle with the Magnate, which is basically just a down-tiered Indian Panzer to tier 7. So it does have decent mobility, as you can see compared here to the Eagle as well. 240 alpha damage, obviously tier 7 appropriate penetration and around 2200 DPM. Let's see what we can do here in this vehicle. Obviously, if you don't already have the vehicle, and you most likely do, there is no point picking up now because... As I already said earlier, you're not actually buying this particular vehicle. You're buying the stock version, and then you have to buy kit coins to upgrade that, which I don't understand why that's even a thing, and I think Wargaming has completely lost the plot with that one. Let's now uh, see what we can do here. Obviously, the T-23 is a very weakly armored vehicle, so there's absolutely no chance he has whatsoever, and some of the enemies are, and some of my team are in the city, so this should be very easy cleanup right here. It's gonna get rid of this panther. Hopefully the panther is gonna continue to focus on the object. And then I'm gonna simply be able to clean up here from the side. Don't have enough pen to go through with HG. By the way, that's something I do recommend trying most of the time. If you're not sure, can you pen it with HE? Just try it. Switch to it. Switch back if it doesn't work. So that helps in a lot of situations as well. And gets you better at the game. Let's see. Because switching ammo quickly is always going to be a very useful skill to have anyway. I'm going to try to go for the T-23 here and just take away the guns that the enemies have available. Obviously, 240 alpha damage is somewhat unusual for tier 7. A lot of them have 160 alpha damage, like the Eagle, like the Comet. They all have, oh, the T-23 have 160, so 240 is quite a bit of an advantage there. And this is a pretty solid vehicle for a tier 7, so if you already have it, you haven't played it in a very long time take it out for a spin it might be worth it it's 2200 damage just like that and the is is probably gonna be afk then or he's hiding in a corner somewhere uh, that would be quite sad i'm gonna go approach from the outside because if he's like spawned there i'm not gonna be able to see him and he's probably gonna be behind the wall right there exactly boom now it's obviously a bit anticlimactic to end, end this, but basically, it's a good tank. If you haven't played it in a while, check it out again. The others are obviously, they're fine, but if you don't have them, they're not worth it. Uh, this one's pretty solid for a tier 7. And uh, generally, do not buy that bundle. I have no idea what Wargaming's thinking, but thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next one.